Okay. Um, aloha, everybody. And uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you, David, for setting our cheese board out here and see what we nibble at today. Um, I, I want to start by saying I've never really been a fan of gambling, but I'm making a pretty sure bet today that all of you, like me, um, you have at some point in some way experienced fear. Fortunately, over the years, I've continued to learn, um, like I'm, hopefully all of us have, that there is an effective way of dealing with that. Um, and for me, it's, it's asking what really is the fear and how do I relate to it? We know fear is basically a signal of some kind of imminent threat. And the threat, whether you know it or not, or if it's a known threat or not, puts the nervous system, the, the body, the mind, into a very uncomfortable stress mode, and usually with very high degrees of negativity. But there is good news with that. And the good news is that all is that there is some fear that's good because it's a natural self-protective response. The bad news is there's fear that can be debilitating and can lead to inappropriate experiences. But the best news, however, something beyond good or bad is that whatever fear we face, we either already have or can learn effective and life-saving responses. Uh, in the most basic of terms, um, you learn, uh, I learn that fear is manageable with our most accessible management tool being mindfulness. I actually practice being mindful of, of what does a fear originate from, you know, what feeds it, what decreases it. And I'm learning as an elder to practice with fear. And yes, that's a real thing, to practice with fear, to change my relationship to the fear factors. And both David and Mark said that in their ways, but by changing that relationship to the fear factors, and also, and this is the hard one, to recognize that some things are just as they are, and there's not always something that we can do about it other than have unbiased acceptance. But sticking to the relationship focus, the relatedness thing, today's poem shares that relatedness is the glue to all things. It uh, determines perception and perception determines reality. It shapes how you see yourself how you see others, and the world around you, and even the world remote from you. Our author, Wendell Berry, shares his practice response to not being controlled or undone by fear. And his practice affects who we are within ourselves and in relation to everything and everyone else in the world. And maybe the best part of this very short poem is you'll hear that this practice results in a greater sense of peace, compassion, appreciation, kindness, and grace. So the poem is titled, The Peace of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things, who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Thank you, short but very poignant. 